Hey, good afternoon, everybody. How are y'all doing today? Um, I just had this little problem come up that uh, I thought was fascinating. Some uh, students of mine um, in an NC class were having a discussion about uh, uh, movies and special effects and things like that. And one of them that came up was one that I hadn't seen. Maybe you all have. It's kind of old now. It's called John Carter on Mars. And there was some discussion that came up at the same time when we were discussing gravity and the effects of gravity on people and how gravity changes depending on where you are, what planet you're on, how high you are above sea level, things like that. So we had a little discussion about that. And there were some misconceptions about that. And I thought I would uh, uh, expand that and add that to to this, this discussion because I thought it was interesting and it's also kind of fun. Let me switch gears here for you. And so here, this uh, this is a title I, I came up with. It said, "How high can John John Carter jump on Mars?" The subtitle was, "Do science fiction writers ever exaggerate?" So when we're talking about high jumping or or anything like that, in general, we call those kind of problems free fall. When we're talking about jumping or projectile motion or anything like that, we're actually discussing free fall. Because after one jumps or one's pushed or one's launched in, into the air or into space or whatever, the only uh, force acting on that person or on that object, which we can call when, when somebody's falling, they're just basically an object falling. Uh, when, when they are undergoing that sensation and that's happening to them, the only force acting on them is gravity. That's it. Well, I wanted to see how far people could, how high people could jump on the Earth. And I really had no idea because if anybody here knows me, you know that I'm not particularly athletic and don't really care about that stuff. But this was interesting, so what the heck. So I did a little research on, on Google, you know, like our friend Google. And uh, it turned out, that at least according to this Google or Wikipedia or wherever I found it, the current high jump record is 2.45 meters, and that was achieved by someone named Javier Sotomayor in my Cuba back in 1993. Still pretty doggone high when you think about you know, almost, uh, that's almost three meters. That's pretty cool. Um, and that's on, and that's on the Earth. So in this case, I was considering just John Carter on Mars, a fictional character. Uh, but I wanted to see a high, high, how high John could jump on the Earth. And since John's not necessarily an Olympic athlete and fictional and I wanted to keep the numbers simple uh, what I said was we're going to assume that John Carter can jump one meter uh, high on uh, in the air on the earth well the only way the only thing that governs that and I'll we'll go into that just in a second the only thing that uh, go into that is how, how fast does one jump the faster you jump the more velocity you've got initially and then that velocity will be drawn off by gravity as you go higher in the air, you'll get to a certain height, then you'll, you'll stop and you'll fall back to the ground. So let's see how high John Carter or anybody, uh, how, how, if they can jump, I'll keep saying this right eventually, if they can jump a meter in the air, how high or how fast must they jump to do that? Well, we can use, there are a couple of ways to do this, but the complete picture, I think, is given if you use potential energy or conservation of energy. Uh, and in this case, when the jumper, in this case John Carter, jumps in the air on anywhere in the universe, on any planet, one starts out with some velocity and then gravity converts that kinetic energy that you have initially into potential energy as you're rising into the air. When the gravity converts it all from kinetic energy to potential energy, all the energy is, is used, you could say used, it's actually stored, and then as you begin to fall back to Earth, it'll be released as you come back to Earth and your velocity increases. So we, we still have the condition that the potential energy plus the total kinetic energy equal the total energy used. And in this case, old John starts off with a one-half mb squared. That's his kinetic energy when he begins his, his launch up into the air. And then when he gets to the top, he has the potential energy. Those two quantities must always sum together to be equal to the total energy. That's just a rule. Um, so initially, when he's on the ground getting ready to jump, 
his potential energy is, is zero, where, where we'll, as soon as he jumps, his potential energy is zero, so he gains kinetic energy by running and jumping up into the air to get to one meter high, and when he gets up there, as he's leaving the ground, all his energy is kinetic energy. Ta -da. When he gets to the top, in this case, we want him to get to at least a meter high. Well, I want a meter because I'm on the how, how much energy or how much velocity it takes to do that. When he when he uh, jumps, as soon as he's in the air, he undergoes a negative acceleration due to gravity. That's the only thing causing him to lose energy is gravitational uh, uh, acceleration. When he gets to the, to the highest point, that means his upward velocity is zero, and, and, and he's now lost all kinetic energy. It's all converted back to potential. It's got to come back down to Earth. So now, the second bullet here, or when the third one down, uh, kinetic energy plus MGH, still total energy, but at the top of the curve, when he's up at the highest point, his kinetic energy is all zero, and energy is all stored for at least for a second. That means that at that point, Kinetic energy that he began with equals kinetic energy, or pardon me, equals potential at the top. In English, that means that the amount of energy he started with was the amount of energy he ends up with. Let's do a little bit of math. Well, we know what the acceleration of gravity is. Well, we knew that from uh, Newton's law of gravity, and I'm going to let you guys do the serious research on this, but... Newton's law of gravity just says between any two bodies, mass one and mass two, and in the first case we're talking about between the Earth and John Carter, the force between them is just a product of the universal gravitational constant, uh, m1 and m2. And I'm, I think I called m2 the mass of John Carter, or the mass of the projectile going up. And M1 is the mass of the planet. In the first case, at least, it's, it's the Earth. And the radius there, which is squared, is uh, the radius of the Earth at first. Now, we're going to also continue to look at Mars in a second after that. So, how much does the gravity on Earth affect us? Well, if you look at that first equation, Newton's Law of Gravity, and if you look at the highlighted areas in yellow, that's the mass of the person that's that's jumping. In this case, I just said, I believe that converts. That's how many uh, kilograms of mass that I'm I'm saying John Carter had. That's 76.2. What we're going to find out is that doesn't really matter. It's still that velocity that you, that you have. But in order to find out John Carter's weight on the Earth, what I'm going to do is just use that. First of all, use that value for uh, determining the force of gravity between Earth and John Carter, and I get a force of a little over 730 newtons. Fine, that's the force between the two bodies. But if I want to find out the special case of, of Newton's second law on the Earth for gravity, I just what I want to find out is what is the acceleration due to gravity on, on the Earth at about sea level. We're going to consider it where John does his jumping. Um, so we've got that 732 number that we just calculated, and that's become John Carter's weight on the Earth. So that equals, and if I look, put in the equation above that, that equals John Carter's mass times acceleration due to gravity. That's all that is. So if, if we set that 732 equal to that, and if we solve for the acceleration due to gravity, we get about 9.6 or 9, 9.7. It's really about 9.8 is the actual number, but, you know, I've budgeted some numbers here. So I can round it up to about 10 meters per square second. I'm going to say that's 1 g on the Earth. So from the earlier chart that we did, we know that kinetic energy and potential energy must be equal and when it gets to the highest point. If you'll notice there, I, I have marked through mass for M because that's the projectile mass or John Carter's mass, and he's jumping because, as you should see here, the velocity you need to jump any height in the air is independent uh, of mass. It's just a function of uh, the gravity and how high you want to go. So we have an equation down here, this one-half v squared, because the m was divided out of that m. We have one-half v squared equals gh, which is acceleration of gravity on the Earth, times the height you want to go. I want to solve this for h. I want this to be this how high. I'll say it right in a minute. This is, I'm going to solve this for V because I want to go one meter in the air. I'll say it right in a second. 
So if I, if I plug in all the numbers here, plug all those things up, and I get 4.5 meters per second. That's the velocity that when, when anybody jumps up in the air and they want to go a meter in the air, no matter what their weight is, they got to have 4.5 meters a second of velocity to get that high straight up. Okay, fine. So, next thing. John goes to Mars, takes a spaceship up there, goes to Mars, and he, we, we have exactly the same equations, but now we have some different values for them. we still got M2 here, and 76.2, those are still the masses of the projector, John Carter, how you want to describe them. This other number here is the, is the mass of Mars, which we know, and this is the radius of Mars, that's squared, that ends up giving us 285 newtons of weight, if that was if that was uh, John Carter's uh, uh, mass. Well, we run through exactly the same equations I ran through before. Only now we come up with acceleration of gravity on Mars, which is different because from this equation here we can see that the acceleration of gravity on Mars is less, about 38 percent of what it is on the Earth, because both the mass and radius of of Mars are smaller, so it has less effect on it. But we still need that number because now I want to say, okay, if, if John's still got a lot of energy and he wants to jump up to go some height on Mars, uh, how uh, how fast he got to go? Well, he's now going to go the same speed he was a few a few months ago when he was on Mars, on the Earth. I'm sorry, I say things too quickly. Um, at any rate. So before you were solving for velocity, now we know the velocity is 4.45 meters per square meters per second. We also have a new value for g, and we want to solve for h. That's 2.6 meters. What that means is if if John can jump uh, one meter on the Earth, he can jump almost three times that on Mars. Now that's pretty cool. I'm pretty impressed by that. But that's not nearly as cool as that movie implied or actually said because they were saying that someone could jump up 300 meters or many meters lots well somebody figured that out that this was kind of wrong a few years ago so you can click on this uh or you can go to this to this site and this they'll they'll tell you what the number really is but i was skeptical i wanted to see it for myself so that's how that's how it works now the number that they get here since you're seeing this on a movie the number that the they get here is about three, which is roughly what I got. There's maybe a little bit rounding error in that, but it's between 2.6 and 3 is what it is. Not anyways near 300. Here's a bonus question for you. you guys can just think about this. If if Javier Sotomayor was to go to Mars and try to jump up there in the Martian Olympics, how high could John could could Javier uh, Sotomayor jump on Mars? I'm gonna leave that as as an exercise for the student or the reader. And I got a little.